At the uh, best sustained stretch for Chris Wilkes, maybe since the first couple of games of the season, um, you talked about tapes getting out on him. How has he kind of counteracted the scouting? Well, he's, he's been working, and I think he's been uh, looking at scouting reports, and he's, he's trying to, one, better himself, and that's all part of growth. And I think we're seeing it. We're seeing it defensively. We're seeing it offensively scoring in a variety of ways now instead of just spot transition threes that we saw early in the season. Now he's getting to the free throw line. He's making free throws. He's getting putbacks. He's running in transition to the rim. He's driving the ball well. Uh, and that's what good scorers have got to learn to do. You've got to be able to score a variety of ways, not just be one dimensional. And I think he's learning that. Also getting better with free throws and the whole team is really. Yeah, it's been a good five game stretch. It's something that, you know, when we start out slow, the first nine, 10 games, I thought, um, we were getting to the line, we just weren't taking advantage of it. And um, now we're still continuing to get to the line, but we're shooting a better percentage. And now the team free throw percentage is over 70, so it's growing. Um, you know, now it's at least respectable. Now if we can get that getting closer to 75, uh, then we've got a weapon. If we can get our team foul shooting to 75, we've got a legit weapon because I think we are good at drawing fouls. And we put teams in some situations where they have to foul us. Now you just got to be able to make them. And we've had a five-game stretch here. We've been doing that. You think that's been a result of uh, more work on it or guys just kind of uh, getting more comfortable? Or? Yeah, well, a lot of them have been young players or guys that hadn't played other than, you know, other than Gigi. Uh, they've been guys that are either young or haven't played. And, you know, and I think those guys and Gigi have put the work into it. But some of it is just the, uh, being overwhelmed with everything that goes on into a college basketball season from understanding offense, understanding defense, understanding the travel that we've had. Uh, we've obviously had a lot going on. And so it's, that puts a lot on them. And I think foul shooting has an awful lot to do with mechanics and then concentration. And we've worked on mechanics with everybody and been very pleased with that. It's been more the ability to concentrate and be tough-minded in making those foul shots. And so now I think guys are getting a little bit more comfortable and they're starting to build some confidence. Does it feel like this team has a more kind of identifiable identity now than, than it did early in the season? Yeah, I think so. I think we're, we're creeping into that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's always can be a, you know, last year it was very clear through the non-league. This, this team has had, to, it's had to evolve because we went from, you know, 11 guys to eight, and now we, we, can, we know we can play Ike, we can play Alec. Um, but we went from 11 to eight overnight. And so now you've had the, that it's been more evolving than it has. This is the way we're going to be right when we start in November uh, because of what happened. This team has had to evolve, and they've really evolved very nicely. I, I think we have, you know, we're, a, we're one stop, one free throw, one more basket away from only having two losses on the year. Uh, with a road win at, at Michigan potentially. So we've been right there in just about every game that we've played. And we've, what I like is we've had a lot of different adversities. We've been down big and come back. We've had big leads and had those shrink and still been able to win uh, other than the one at Michigan. We've been able to hang on and do the, the tough-minded things. And that's pretty impressive when you've had, and that's why I've, I've told the players, when, when you've got five guys that aren't used to any of that, um, that's been impressive. And now we go into another challenge. It's these five guys are going up to the Bay for the first time and it's their, their first road trip in league play. And that's never easy. And I'm anxious to see how, how we respond to that. You subbed Alex in for Gigi pretty early in both halves. Was that uh, just a new substitution pattern thing or was there something you saw there? Um, no, I think both of those guys know if they're not playing hard and tough enough to my standard, mm -hmm. then I'll continue to sub that way. So it's, it's not any kind of uh, set in stone thing. It, it's really about uh, what kind of effort, energy, toughness that I'm going to get uh, is going to determine not just with Gigi and Alex, that's really happening with our guard play as well. You found a way to get uh, Aaron some more rest in that game. Did you, was that a conscious Well, I want, to get, I want to get Aaron rest the right way. I got Aaron rest in the first half because Aaron wasn't playing well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I don't want to get him rest that way. Uh, I want to get him rest in practice. Um, I want to get him rest on off days uh, because we're, we're a whole different team when he's on the court, and we know that. And uh, that was a game that, uh, and I mentioned that afterwards, that I, I didn't think Tom and in particular Aaron uh, were anywhere near their A game, and yet they kept fighting. And the good lesson for our freshmen and young guys to see is that when you don't have your A game, it's not about quitting or pouting or putting your head down. Find different ways of being successful, and I thought both Tom and Aaron did that. 
and as leaders, that's really good for our young guys to see. You talked before the season about the athleticism of this team with guys like Jalen and Chris coming in. Um, have you seen defensively that athleticism kind of realize its potential? Well, we're getting better. We're growing deficiency, or, or we're growing defensively. Um, you know, I saw our efficiencies down to 98. You know, and our goals right around 94, 95. So it's been a hovering around 100, 101, and we've dropped that down to 98 in the last two weeks. So if we can in our league play and our our efficiency defensively keeps getting to the numbers we want, um, then that tells me we're growing. So uh, more than the athleticism, uh, we know we've got that. It's just learning how to play it, learning what we want to do defensively, uh, the schemes that we have defensively, and just being really solid fundamentally with those schemes. Um, and I think we're seeing some growth there. Last year you guys had an elite passer in Lonzo. Now you've got still five guys basically averaging double figures. What does that say about just the trust amongst this group? Well, and, and Lonzo was elite, but we had a team of elite mm -hmm. passers. Um, you know, we only had one guy playing last year that had more turnovers and assists. Um, so we had a whole team of, of guys that had two to one, three to one. Lonzo was closer to five to one assist turnover ratio. So it was a team that are understood. It's a whole different team. Yeah. Um, this team is different than that. Um, we we haven't. That was a team that uh, led the country in efficiency. So um, I don't think it's fair to compare that. Um, if you if you're going to compare it the other way, this team is doing a much better job um, through 12 games defensively. Um, so it, each year identities can change, and I'm I'm never going to put this team up against last year's team efficiency offensively. I mean it was. You've only seen one other team in college basketball have an offensive efficiency like last year's team. So that's not fair to compare that. It's more about what this team is and, and what we're makeup is and how we're evolving as a basketball team is what I'm really excited about. How is Aaron evolving just as a, as a player? Well, he's a big-time player. He's an elite player. He's, in my mind, he's not just one of the best players on the West Coast. He's one of the best players in the country. He, uh, uh, if you just look at our numbers of when he's in the game versus out of the game, um, and, and we're doing some. We're doing a lot of good things. You know, at uh, at 11 and three, just record-wise, um, we're doing a lot of good things. And his efficiency is a big, big key to that. Uh, and he doesn't just do it at the offensive end. He does it at the defensive end. He's a tireless worker, and there's a lot of responsibility on him. His biggest responsibility is leadership, and I think that's where he's he's grown the most this year. How will these Bay Area teams challenge you guys? Well, every road trip's a challenge in this league, and. Um, it's a challenge for us. Stanford's coming off a loss, so they're getting healthy. Uh, they've been beat up. Uh, they've had the injury bug all year long, and Pickens is back. Uh, so they're getting much more healthy now than what they were a month ago, and um, Pickens is a vital part of what they do, both offensively and defensively. So um, the Bay trip's never easy, you know, and it's, uh, but it's an important road trip. It's our first road trip. I'm anxious to see how the young players respond. Uh, how our veterans do a good job with leading them, of understanding what a road trip is about. Uh, but we've played well uh, away from home, and hopefully we'll continue that.